Three, two, one. Catherine Sheehan. Did I do that right? You did that right. All right. So you are the official county and city historian. So Rensselaer County County historian and Troy Troy City City historian. historian. How does one become the city (laughs) and county historian of Troy? Well, he who keeps speaking or she who keeps going out and speaking all the time uh, ends up getting picked. Um, The county one is interesting because I've been officially the county historian since 2006. But I was in acting in that capacity because we didn't have an official historian for many, many years before that. And it just kind of kind of morphed into it um, based on my work at the Rensselaer County Historical Society. Uh, I was always, you know, people coming in to answer research requests. And then I started doing lots of lectures and then, um, you know, answering a lot of technical things for other historians and then kind of pulling them together to try and do some exhibits, like mainly at the Scattercook Fair. Uh, so I started coordinating that many years ago and getting our 14 town historians and the village historians together um, for a topic based to a theme based um, exhibition to be presented at the fair. And so all those things that and, you know, a bunch of other stuff kind of morphed together. And uh, we finally was like, OK, you should officially be named the county historian. So Kathy Gimino named me the official historian back in 2006. So, and then uh, the city historian kind of grew the same way. Um, and uh, not that we don't have lots of other great historians around in Troy, so there, there are, uh, but it was the same kind of thing. People were, you know, calling in down. And, and, you know, the fact that the historical society is there, is here, and, and that we have all this incredible information. I mean, we have, you know, thousands of feet of uh, lineage, linear feet of, of archives, and, and so you're always digging up information. And uh, now I'm a native of Rensselaer County, native of Troy. I've been here. My relatives go back to the 1760s here. Uh, so my paternal grand, my paternal grandmother's family, yeah. So uh, long lineage. Whoa. Um, so you just kind of, you kind, I kind of fell into it in a wonderful way, and uh, I love doing it. I love going out and talking about the city and the county and. Um, and coordinating our historians, and I'm liaison to the New York State historian. Then, so, um, so things I get together are historians about four times a year uh, for meetings, and then um, in turn, as a county historian, I then go up for meetings with the state historian. So we kind of keep everybody in the loop on on what's going on. Uh, member, I'm a member of the Association of Public Historians for New York State. And, are you the first historian of, his, of Rensselaer oh gosh, County? Oh in, gosh, no, Like no, official no. capacity? Oh no, oh no, okay. no, no, no. We had for years, no, because that was something that was mandated by the state back uh, in the 19-teens, uh, early 19-teens or 20s. And uh, so we had um, historians that did it for many, many years, and there's so not too many of them. Um, and then somewhere in the gap between mid-70s, 1970s till now, till 2006, we didn't have one um, on the books. Um, H. Irving Moore was the last one that was in Lansingburg. Um, he was an official historian for the city of village, the village of Lansingburg. And uh, Victor Rolando was county was a county one. Um, uh, so yeah, so I so I have long. <laughs> so give me some family history. If you're saying your family goes back oh, to 1760, okay. yeah. is this something like as a kid? Did you hear like grandparents with Absolutely. stories? Absolutely. Oh right. I mean, it is really. It's my grandparents and my parents who just really started instilling that love of history from when I was a little kid. Um, my paternal grandmother, uh, her family said they settled out in Sand Lake and Steventown area in the 1760s. They came over from uh, uh, Lyme, Connecticut. Uh, they actually sailed in. I always say we were, you know, there's the people who came in on the Mayflower and then there was the boat after that. That was to have my family on it. <laughs> we were like following them. Yeah, they came into you know, came into Boston in 1620s and then settled in Old Lyme, uh, Connecticut, and then worked their way over uh, before the Revolution. Um, many of the Rensselaer County residents uh, that were from New Englanders came in after the Revolution, but they were here beforehand, so they were here really early when it was all still Albany County, um, you know, both sides of the river, where Albany County, Rensselaer County was part of Albany County until 1791. So, um, yeah, so they were here, so I heard these stories about the Huntleys and they were out at the end of Crooked Lake and they had, you know, land they were sending out to loggers and 
farming and you know great stories about my grandfather then you know in the 20th century they had this you know this camp out there that they would take the trolley out to the uh, out take the go up the east side out Pauling Avenue and take the trolley uh, the Troy New England Railway uh, and go out to um, Crystal Lake out to Avril Park where you got off mm -hmm. the trolley and then my grandfather would walk the rest of the way um, to Crooked Lake so which was probably about five miles you know five or six miles to go from one place to the other and so yeah I grew up with those stories and um, just a real love of history my mom uh, is from Naples uh, Italy she's uh, she met my dad my dad was serving during World War II so she was a war bride so I grew ah. up hearing all these stories about you know my mother being a teenager and young woman growing up during World War II and uh, in Naples and um, you know hearing all that and then uh, probably one of the neatest stories that always stuck in my mind uh, that um, you know, directly related into Troy was my grandfather told me the story about how his grandmother um, was on the Manhattan side of the Brooklyn Bridge and used to watch Mrs. Roebling bring the notes back and forth to all the foremen after after uh, Washington after Washington Roebling got the bends. Um, he was after when they were digging the Brooklyn Bridge, and so we lived up on. I grew up on Beeman Park up on Seventeenth Street, and so when we walked downtown, we walked up. You know, through Beeman Park and then down through the RPI campus, down the approach uh, to come downtown. And as we were walking through RPI, you know, my grandfather always was telling us that story. So, you know, you know, Roebling went went here. He said his son went to, you know, not John Washington, John Roebling's son, Washington Roebling went to RPI. And, uh, and your grandma, your your great grandmother, you know, so it's like, wow, you know, I saw these images of, of my great grandmother and, and it, just this connection to this amazing story about how something so wonderful to the Brooklyn Bridge had a connection to Troy and to you and to, and to me yes and even with my grandmother you know who you know who you know physically saw Mrs. Roebling you know or my great-grandmother I should say yeah yeah wow so it was great that Actually, she would have been my great great wait your grandma? great great grandmother great. right because it was my grandfather was my grandfather's grandmother um that has told the story so that would be my great-great-grandmother yeah yeah. And someone wrote that all down, or at least passed that. No, we're writing it down. Okay. <laughs> but we those oral those that oral history was all those stories were, you know, passed around the kitchen table while we were, you know, playing Chinese checkers and, you know I'm fascinated when those stories Monopoly don't get and, lost. Uh, and cards. Like, so many of those awesome stories get yeah. lost in families. Right. Like people stop telling the stories. Right. Well, I was fortunate that, you know, we lived in a two story flat and we lived downstairs and my grand my paternal grandparents lived upstairs. So I grew up with my grandparents. And uh, so they were just an everyday part of our life. As many families did here in Troy. You know, a lot of a lot of people always tell you know, that was more typical than single family homes is you had a lot of these, you know, two and three story flats. Were the, was and, this uh, the Italian side? The Neapolitan no, no, side? this is not the Italian side. This is this, this is the uh, Scottish uh, Scottish English side. This is my, my paternal grandparents. No, that's my mom. Is, okay. Is all Italy. Yeah. I okay. never got to meet any of those relatives until, you know, 15 years ago. I think it's awesome when families live together like that. Yeah. I think it's fantastic. It's but you're right. You don't we see never it had much locked, anymore. We never locked a door because nobody was ever away. My, <laughs> you know, my, grand, my grandmother was always older. She didn't really go out all that much. So, you know, it's like, okay, you know, my mother, you know, they run to the store. They have to go here and there. You know, your grandmother's upstairs. You just, people were just always home. So I, we couldn't even tell you where a key, you know, you, you go out with keys. We went out with keys. We never went out with a key. Seriously, our house was never locked. <laughs> That seems like a different world now, different right? Different world, right, right, yeah. yeah. Right. You, you 50s, mentioned the RPI 60s. approach, yeah. the RPI yeah, approach. The approach. Here's a question that I've had for the past year or so. Okay. Now, I don't think I bothered you at the Historical Society with this question, but <laughs> now I will because you just reminded me between the trolleys and yeah. mentioning their approach. I read that the the train that used to come into Troy used to roll right up to the approach. Like that was the first thing that students would see when, was the approach when they arrived into Troy. I forget where I read that. Is, well, is that true? It, well, it's the 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 Sixth Avenue is really where the train lines ran. So okay. you're up. A, it's a block or so away. But they would have seen that. It's if you come down the approach, you come down to Broadway. I mean, it's not it's skajui now, mm -hmm. but Broadway literally ran up to the approach, and so you would come down at Eighth. Uh, 7th Avenue, 6th Avenue, that's where all the trade, the rail yards were right there, 6th Avenue, um, where the Blitman Hall is now, which is 
was an old Holiday Inn. That residence Inn. hall? That residence okay. hall. That was an old Holiday Inn, and the old Holiday Inn stood right on the rail tracks. Okay. Okay, so that's where you would get that, that image. Okay, because I've had a hard time picturing And Union that. Station was right across the street from what is now Blitman. So it's Thradic building, that very kind of crazy modern brutalist building between <laughs> Fulton and Broadway. Okay, so there are remnants of the, the, the station. station at all. No, oh, so no, there's that ugly no, little no. building on the that corner. I don't know the name on of that site. That commercial right. that, that always says building. it's oh, right. okay. The that building. seems really out of yeah. place. So yeah. that was the train station. That was the site of the train. The site of the train station, okay. the Union Station. So yeah, so students would have, seen, but they didn't literally pull up to the approach, but pretty close to it. You know, yeah, you just walk a couple blocks and then you go up the steps and work your way up the. 320 something steps to the uh, <laughs> now approach that is called Union Station. Is right. that something that it, it was built after World War? I mean, oh, the Civil no. War? Oh gosh, no, 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 no. The first Troy Union Station goes back to the um, 1840. One, two, I'm terrible with dates. Um, there was a railroad bridge over the Hudson where the, green, the gr first Green Island Bridge was a wooden covered bridge. And so the first Union Railroad Station. Uh, that came down over there on that same location is probably 18, somewhere around 1840, somewhere between 1840 and 1845. I'd have to check the date. Um, and so that one was there. Uh, then that stayed until the Great Fire of May the 10th of 1862 when the um, locomotive was coming across the bridge, the covered wooden railroad bridge, um, and they crossed Center Island. And when they got to the east side of the bridge, the flames caught the roof on fire and it literally was a firestorm and it burnt all of you know just the whole area of downtown um, heading over towards the hill including you that union station um, and then then it was rebuilt and then uh, that one was torn down and they built a beautiful Beaux Arts style um, uh, uh, station that was done by the same architects who then got the contract to do Grand Central Station so if you went to Grand Central Station, you see these amazing vaulted ceilings. I'm mm -hmm. sure you've been in Grand Central Station and great clocks and everything. A lot of that was from, you know, a lot of, they incorporated some of their designs that they had, they had done um, on the Troy Union Station. So okay. Troy Union Station was very, very... Why very, did we get rid of it? Down. Oh, that is the $65,000 question, $64,000 question. Well, there was a lot of talk. Um, we were in the process. It was in the uh, the last the last passenger train came through Troy in 1958, and um, there was um, uh, commercial uh, commercial traffic, uh, you know, industrial traffic that came over the Green Island Bridge and went north, which was the Boston and Maine Railroad, um, and uh, but everything going to the south when you came off that. Uh, was going to be taken up for a north, uh, north, ar northern arterial, uh, not 787. You know, the the everybody always said, oh no, 787 was supposed to come on this side of the river. Well, what really wasn't? There was always going to be two roads. There was the interstate 787, and then there was going to be a state highway um, on our side. And so they, and to get ready for that, they tore it down. However, before that, they did hit. There were a lot of discussions. Uh, in the papers and things about what, you know, let's not tear down Union Station. Why not make it City Hall? And things like that, which never ultimately happened. And they, they ended up tearing it down uh, somewhere around 1959, 1960, so somewhere around that. It was it was torn down. And you it, describe it as a beautiful building. It was a though. beautiful building. Beautiful, beautiful building. Don't we have City Hall issues right now? Wouldn't that be a pretty, <laughs> pretty good a hard, spot? We kind of have a hard time hanging on to our City Halls. Um, we, I mean, literally from the time that Troy became, you know, was officially a city uh, in 1816, it went from a village to a city and Albert Pauling was our first mayor. Um, Troy used rooms in the courthouse, in the basement of the Rensselaer County Courthouse. Um, they used council chambers and things like that. And then um, finally, in 1875, um, we had our first very grand city hall which was on the corner of State and Third Street, which is now where Barker Park is, across from Hard okay. uh, uh, Ace Hardware Street. Where the church is? It's now on the church? The, which is now where the church is, yes. So it took up took up that space. And uh, it was designed by Marcus Cummings, who was an architect that came in here uh, um, after the Great Fire of 1862, did a number of the prominent buildings that we see that are still extant, extant here in Troy. And um, he... Uh, 
did a beautiful design, and that building burnt um, mysteriously <laughs> in October of 1938. Um, the, the talk was is that they were, you know, if there was city officials were under investigation and to cover it all up. That's the rumor that's always going around, you know, who, whether that's all true or not. But you know, so that was that was the way the rumor went. Um, is then the the building was uh, the building was uh, torched. Well, and they also never could prove arson either. So, um, but it was just destroyed by fire in October of 1938. And then City Hall went over to upstairs over the Central Station over here on State and uh, State and Sixth Avenue near where the police and fire stations are, or police station, police station. Now they were up there until 1974 uh, when the City Hall was built up on Monument Square. Um, and, uh, and of course, that was torn down in 2011. God, is that already that far gone? Yeah, it was that long. So that's ago. that big open space now. Yes, that's the big open okay. space the, now. The, the, big, the big, what do we do with this? What are we doing with one monument square? Gotcha. Exactly. What do you think as a his, the historian? What do I think as the historian? Well, um, where did you stand on the, the movie theater proposal? I, I didn't mind the movie theater proposal. I wasn't thrilled about the design of the building. Um, I wanted to see more of the river. I would have liked to have seen a little more wider esplanade, more windows, um, take a little more advantage of that. I wasn't, it didn't really bother me that it was going to be a modern structure, um, but I just wanted it to be a better design. That's exactly what I said. I, I said a movie theater I, I, there would be pretty cool, yeah, but give us but windows. We need the windows. Windows I wanna, you so you know, can see through. I, yeah. I really like the idea of, I wish that the whole, because, because, Say what you want about the city, the other city hall building that was there. It had a great esplanade out there. And you could walk out and they had that nice railing. You could look out over the river and then the stairs that went down. And I like that. And, and I wish that they had incorporated by leaving that whole kind of space open and just building on the upper levels, you know, and, and tie it in somehow. So it wasn't going really much higher than the Burdett building or, or the... Um, or the Sentinel building that would have been to the south, but leave that first, leave that, leave that River Street. So you, so as you're walking up Second Street, when you're walking over Broadway and you're at Monument Square, you could still look out and see the river through there, you know, and then incorporate it. So I wouldn't have had a problem with it, with a modern a modern design. I just wanted it to be more inclusive of the views of the river. Yeah, you know, we that spent, seems like an asset right there. We right spent in that so spot. many years and. You know, I know it's this. It's not one of the fair. I mean, everything where Riverfront Park is. I love Riverfront Park. Um, you know, because as a kid growing up, that was you know there was where, that was where a lot of department stores were, and there were some buildings that should never have been torn down. Um, things like the Troy Theater, the Boardman Building, uh, things like that along that block. There were other buildings though. They're really dark, really crummy, and the warehouses that were on the river say so you couldn't see the river. So the fact that you have Riverfront Park is wonderful. That you've taken now advantage of this beautiful river and you. You can see it so i love that and i would have liked that same thing through you know where one monument square is you know built on the top part leave the bottom <laughs> leave that open i love that um, is that city you know, property is that who owns that now is that city property i guess part of it's city property i think yeah because uh, such city, a weird city, spot city hall is there yeah no, that's what that, i would have guessed right? yeah i guess that's city property yeah Okay, so city so, property, they're trying to sell to so, someone that we all right. that approves what they're going to do with it. Right, right. And this has been going on since 11, oh you said? Oh my god, yes, it's 2001. Oh goodness. Right, right. So who knows where that's all going to go? Hey, this is, you know, and this is, you know, everybody's like, oh, this is, you know, everything. there's been fights like this that have been going on for... <laughs> 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 Change the date. It's nothing new. They were complaining about the site of City Hall when they built it there in 1875. They didn't like that there either. You know, go back and look at the old Troy Daily Times. There were people who were moaning and groaning about that site too. And, you know, that you, went there. You know? <laughs> you've already named, in our brief conversation so far, I think you've already named like a dozen building names. Yeah. Like, what, what's your favorite buildings? Oh my gosh. Oh, that's really hard to say because there's I really like so many of them for different reasons. Well, I have a very sentimental favorite of mine on Monument Square, and that's the McCarthy Building, because my grandfather worked there, and he was the furniture buyer for um, the furniture store that was there in the 30s, 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s. So it was R.C. Reynolds, and then it became John P. Ryan Furniture. My grandfather was 
the buyer for Mr. Reynolds and Mr. Ryan. So I grew up in that, literally grew up in that building, running up and down stairs and going in the elevators and looking at that, that beautiful Palladium window that's over there that was always decorated. You know, we used to stand in that window. So that is a, a, a sentimental, and I think it's a beautiful building with that great terracotta facade. Um, I love the Rice Building, which is the one that's kind of our version of a flat iron building. Yeah. With all that wonderful... Um, you know, coined, you know, all that beautiful brick and, and mosaic stonework up top. I think it's an incredible, an incredible structure. And uh, then I love some of the simpler ones. Um, 12 State Street, which is, has a great story. It's an early federal building, early brick federal building. It's on the alley of, of um, on Freer Alley uh, between 2nd and 1st Street on the south side. Uh, beautiful entryway um, that was restored by our friend Carl Erickson, who's done a number of buildings here in the city of Troy. And that building had a great story because it was actually moved from across, just down the street here, um, where the, literally down the street here, where the Caldwell apartment building is now, mm -hmm. um, that sat on that site and they picked it up and moved it over to that. So it survived all that in 1904 when they built the Caldwell. And uh, so it's just meant to hang out and it's, and it has a beautiful federal style um, fireplace inside and the and, and the mantle in the in the uh, room and Carl did such a great job of restoring all that. You're getting me excited. I feel like I haven't been in <laughs> yeah. enough of these enough buildings. Of these like buildings, I see, yeah. I know the buildings you're talking about, but I've right. only seen most of them from the outside. Right. Just last yeah. week was the first time I was really in the Freer building. Uh -huh. Oh, and it's incredible. Yeah, like that was a department store. That was right? a, that was a big department store. They actually started out. Um, in, on Monument Square in the, in the Cannon Building, where the Ilium Cafe and mm -hmm. everything. That was William H. Frears, Frears Troy Cash Bazaar. They were in that building. And of course, that is one of the longest running ex existing commercial buildings in the country, designed by A.J. Davis, uh, Alexander Jackson Davis, and Ithiel Town. And um, um, oh my gosh, who's the third architect? It's going to go right on my head. Uh, it'll come back to me in a second. Um, James Dakin. They were like the triumvirate of amazing architects in that in that first and first half of the 19th century, New York high style, and um, they they uh, do the Cannon Building and William Freer comes in and has this Freer's Troy Cash Bazaar. Uh, then by the turn of the century, as the city kept growing north, it's, it's, the other thing that's interesting is really Troy grew from Ferry Street going north. Every, now our center of attention is from the Green Island Bridge, kind of south mm -hmm. was the business district, but it really grew up from Ferry Street. So as the city was growing north, um, he's, you know, okay, even though we have this great Washington Square, which is Washington Square then, um, he decides to build um, the Freer's Department Store on Fulton Third, and uh, which is an, an incredible building and uh, a wonderful department store. Um, you know, you have... 75,000 people living in Troy at the time when Whoa. somewhere around there, yeah, somewhere around there, 70, 75,000 people living in Troy around the turn of the 20th century. And, uh, you know, ten, almost 10,000 women were employed in the collar factories in Whoa. Troy. Yeah, huge. I, I have a hard time like grasping that amount of people. It's gra that that's the issue. Like yeah. it seems like Troy. When we talk about the history, and the more I learn and hear about it, mm -hmm. it seems like a phenomenal place. I mean, it yeah. is phenomenal now, but right. it's it's kind of rising from the ashes and oh, all the issues We've of done the nineteen seventies. Right. Yeah, but yeah. it seems back in the late eighteen yeah. hundreds, early nineteen hundreds, yeah. it was a fantastic place to be. Yeah. It yeah. seems like yeah. it was a thriving. Well, by the time by the time you get magnet. to the twentieth century, it's a sh becomes this really shopping mecca um, for. 50 years, you know, 60 years. Um, it's, it's this incredible shopping mecca. You had these anchor stores. You had the Freer's Department Store on Fulton and Third. Um, what is now the center of gravity was GVS Quackenbush, another big department store, which actually is a building that's dated 1855. Um, you know, again, you know, you start having ready to wear clothes and, and you can just buy everything in a department store. Um, you have the Rice Building, you know, you've got, you've got these major buildings anchoring um, you know these these market block building where the market block books are. You know it's, these these are very imposing. And the one that you wouldn't have you didn't know unless you look at a photograph is where the parking garage is now. The Boardman Building. Um, which, is that it, on River? No, that was on that was on oh, River, uh, River and Fulton. Okay, okay, literally where the parking garage is on the Riverside. Um, over near Fulton Street is the Ilium Building, which is again it's a twentieth early twentieth century building or very very late nineteenth century. It's like 1898, it's somewhere right around. 1900 is the Ilium building um, and the Boardman building that, that would have it was look was about the same size as that so you had these giant 
giant, giant buildings. Um, so these these were it was a shopping mecca. It was a shopping mecca. People from around came oh, to Troy to shop. Yes, to, people came, all around came from around to shop. And at the same time, you met, you hit upon it. We were building. We were making collars. The, the collars, collar city and cuffs. The collars and cuffs industry. The shirt industry. Um, that nineteen, you know, that right around nineteen ten period when you really this white collar worker, the arrow man. You know, you see, you know, the white spats and the whole, you know, the whole. Like Nine every yards. picture you've right. seen every from the 1900s, seen, everybody's right, exactly. dressed up looking the right. same. Exactly, right. Okay. Probably most likely wearing an arrow collar. I mean, there were many, there, there you know, arrow, or um, Peabody wasn't the only um, collar manufacturer here. Um, there were many. Uh, they just were the biggest. And, and as the smaller ones, they kind of kept buying out some of the smaller ones. <laughs> and they even married into it. Um, the uh, Peabody companies, uh, one of the sons married into George George P. I., who was their competitor, married their daughter. So, <laughs> so the, she and married a collar guy. guy. I think, yeah, right. She married a collar guy. They, you know, they, 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 they're buried across from each other in, in Oakwood Cemetery, the Cluets and the Ides, which is great. Oh, no kidding. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. As a matter of fact, Caroline Ide Cluet, they were the last owner. Caroline Ide Cluet and Albert Cluet were the last owners of the Hart Cluet House, and it was they who challenged the board of the Historical Society to raise enough money for an endowment to support the building to turn it into a museum. Where you work. Where I work. <laughs> All right. Where All right. I work as one of our three buildings that we have on our site. Yeah. I live, uh, my girlfriend and I, we live in one of the Hart houses, 169 2nd Street. 169 2nd Street. Yeah. Oh. Has a, it's the Hart House. Oh, that's H E A R T. Yes, it's yes, spelled a different not way. Diff spelled different, yes. different hearts. Totally different, uh, totally different hearts. Different so hearts. we have two yeah, prominent Hart um, families here in Troy. Yes, yes. yes. In the 1800s. This is um, Jonas Hart, who was one of the investors in Washington Park. Did you have anything to do with that Washington Park book that came out? Uh, Perfectly a long time. Oh, the oh the Washington. Oh yes, no that one. Yes, I did. Um, Steve Muller um, mm -hmm. and Chris P. Schaefer. Yeah. Oh yes. No, I helped a lot with the images and and review text and things like that. It's actually published by the Historical Society. We, we oh, all right. We actually published it. Um, Steve finished it up, and we have um, Pete, Pete who did did the original research and, and writing on all that had passed away about um, six years ago. Um, you know, all of his his papers are here at the are, are at the historical society. So, um, and knew P, I knew Pete very well, so I knew for years all the research he was doing on that. And then Steve picked up the reins to finish it up and, and get it and get it published, which was great. So it's a terrific book. Yeah, yeah, yeah I've checked. It was it very out. exciting. Yeah. It's very exciting to see that done. Yeah, yeah, because it's it's an important again. It's, that was the Burbs. You know, you're kind of moving again as the city growing south. That was like the suburbs to kind of move into and get out of the, you know, the real craziness of the city and build, you know, these, this beautiful area around Washington Park. Just eat, so even just a half just a mile that, yeah, just, away, oh yeah, it was suburbs at that that's time. That's kind of suburbs at that time, or, or when you're going up the hill. Um, Amanda Cluett uh, was Amanda Cluett's husband. George Cluett is the founder of Cluett and Peabody and Company, uh, at that time known as George B. Cluett Brother and Company. And in 1869, she's writing a letter to her sister-in-law back in England. And uh, they lived on 8th Street um, near Hutton. And she said, I'm looking out at the beautiful fields behind me. So there was nothing on the hill going up from 8th mm -hmm. Street where, where they were. So none of the buildings there. And she said, oh, I'm just wishing George would get this crazy collar idea out of his head and become a gentleman farmer. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine if he actually had ever done that because he became a very, very wealthy man and they did a lot of good things with their money. They were... Um, they were uh, some of the founders of Samaritan Hospital. Uh, Amanda Cluett uh, paid for all the furnishings of the YWCA on First Street, which is still there and going strong, yeah. uh, celebrating their 100th anniversary this year. Uh, they were involved with the Weawaka Holiday House up in uh, Lake George, which was a, 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 a summer camp respite for the collar workers, for these women. You know, who are mostly young. A lot of them in the in the mid nineteenth century are, are Irish. Uh, later on, you've got lots of other nationalities that came in, and it gave them a place, an affordable place to go for a break. Um, usually, the first couple of weeks in August, um, all the factories shut down. You know, they had to do maintenance on the machines and things like that. So, think about it. You have these ten thousand mostly single young women. What do we do with them all? You know, and they wanted to be able to give them an affordable. Um, affordable little vacation. Send them away to the lake. Send them away to the lake. Whoa. And you can take the train up from Troy and take the train right up to Lake George. And oh my God. Where are our trains? Where are our trains, Where no are our trains and trolleys? I want light rail back. 
We had, did we have a trolley? Here. I'm gonna. I'm oh jump. no, we had lots of trolleys. You yeah, got me. No. I have so many questions. Like every <laughs> three words you say, I'm like, okay, I want that. Okay, answer that. Okay, we had trolleys. Yeah. Like down going downtown, sure. oh, and absolutely. you could go wherever you wanted. Right, right, right. right. Trolleys everywhere. Trolleys to Boston Spa and Saratoga, um, Waterford, Cohoes. I mean, basically everywhere the bus lines go, trolleys went. Oh, trolleys went up the hill, out to the lakes. You know, you got on the train from there, which took the trolley, starting with horse horse trolleys first, and then going with, you know, um, electric trolleys and uh, things like that. So, um, yeah, no, was, there's great photographs that, you know, show Troy with... People on horse and buggies and trolleys and trains and you know it's just like pandemonium um, for for a while. But I know I want light rail. I, I want the light rail. So actually, easier. there's still a rail. There's a there's a, the there's a rail line that still is in existence for industrial that comes all the way up from down in Rensselaer, all the way up to the posting hill. That's yeah. So it's still there, and the trains deliver salt tonight and we're now all sorts of things that are that are going up there so they have to extend a little bit farther even if you got to adams street and just like a like you know below the congress street bridge mm -hmm. great put a little same put that rail and it would just it would make life so much simpler because then you could just hop on the train go to rensselaer get on the train go to the city and we have all these people that want to come up from we would want it we'd want it we want it for I sure want it for sure not to mention then hooking that across the Hudson to go to Albany. And think of all the people who could just get on the train that live in Troy and just go to the train, get on the train, go to work, down the you know, take all that traffic away from When did we take our seven. last trolleys out? Uh, right around 1929, because that's when the buses really took over. I think, yeah, I think there's, we have an image that says last trolley, last trolley coming out of Union Station, pulling away from there, and I think it's somewhere around 1929. Oh, man. Um, yeah, and the bus is, you know, finally, you know, which was United Traction Company, which is now CDTA. Address this semi-conspiracy for me. <laughs> I heard something I read years ago, uh, Standard Oil, the, the, the Rockefellers, Vanderbilt, whoever they were, they bought up all of the trolley lines throughout the country back in the back in the twenties or the yeah. teens. They bought up all the trolley lines and tore them out, tore out the rails and just got rid of the trolleys because they wanted people to buy cars so they could sell more gas and more maybe Henry Ford. Is there any no, any credence to that at no. all? No, I think it just, it really was just the evolution of the next wave of, of transportation that was more efficient. And people wanted cars. The, no, not necessarily the cars. It was, you know, it was things like the, you know, buses. And so we were, we were depend. I mean, there were cars. There were cars around, but not, not like we think of a car. We're not a. It didn't. That didn't. Ha that car culture didn't happen. At least not here, anyway. That fast. Um, that's a post World War II thing. I mean, yeah, there were a bunch of cars, but everybody took the bus, and there were hundreds of buses. Oh my gosh! I mean, even I went to Catholic High up in Lansingburg, and and you would we didn't have school buses. We took the city bus. What? Yeah, no, you took the city bus. I took the Beeman Park bus down to Hoosick Street to River Street, and then you wait in front of the Palace Diner, and then you took the uh, one of the Waterford buses would bring you up to 116th Street. You got in, you walked in to go to Catholic High, and there were tons of them. They ran every ten every ten minutes. There was a bus, tons buses, 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 buses. Tons of buses. Everybody took buses. It wasn't. It wasn't a. You didn't. It wasn't a thing. It just everybody did. But now we hate buses. Now we hate buses. <laughs> I know. Now but we hate buses. Self-driving cars. I love buses. What about self-driving like cars or self-driving buses? Is that the next thing? Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. I Hopefully. still. I want, I want light rail. I want light rail. I do too. <laughs> But are we? Are, is that ever going to happen? I want to so literally go right up River Street, up to Second Avenue, go all the way down, take it all the way down, just run that sucker up and down. It'd be fantastic. Wouldn't it be great? It if would I already the lottery. Would, that's what I would get. <laughs> it would add to the charm of this place it so would. much. Well, I you know there's lots of places I've been doing it. I've been down Jersey City has a has a light rail that runs up and down the street. It's about a block in from the from the from the Hudson. It just goes up and down, up and down. People hop on, hop off. I mean, look at the cable cars out in San Francisco. People hop on the app off, you know. All right, I think yeah. we're proposing it right I'm now. Proposing right you now. get enough signatories. Oh, I've already proposed. Believe. Oh, really? <laughs> I've been. A oh, this is more than just 
you talk oh, and smack. You've actually gone <laughs> forward. Oh no, I've I've been I've been complaining to anybody that will hear it with this. <laughs> it's it's fall, it hasn't fallen on deaf ears. I think in in theory everybody agrees with it. It's just a matter of where you know where does the, where do the dollars come from? You know, of course. But you know, if we're all trying to reduce our carbon footprint, I mean, come on, you know, let's get rid of all these cars. Let's use the light rail. It's just so. It's just such a. I love trains anyway. It's a, it's a civilized way to travel. <laughs> what can you tell me more about the um, the old brick factory, the old brick oh, furniture? Which was, which, which was another collar that was, well, it, it was a number of different ones uh, in more recent years. 20th century, most likely remember, as Tiny Town Togs, which was a children's clothing. But it was another collar one. And I, for the life of me, I'm trying to remember what was the name of that collar. Which color one that was in the 19th century? But yeah, no, tiny town togs. I mean, so many people, you know, work there, uh, making wonderful little kids' dresses and clothes and, and things like that. And uh, now that's going to be apartments. I love that we are adaptively reusing all these amazing big buildings. I mean, right, the Clute and Peabody main factory plant that John Headley did over. Um, you know, he was our hero. He's he him and him and Michael Cocos started it off with two big buildings here you know he did the he did the uh, Clinton Peabody building and Michael took on Franklin Plaza and uh, uh, John took out not only the Clinton Peabody but the Mark Lavalag books where we're Mark the Market Block building restoring that David Bryce and you know Sam Judge and all the rest of them you know they've all been you know going here here and there to, to do these um, Tom Nardachi has done such an amazing job with um, over on 4th Street at the um, uh, Innovation Garage which was an old Pierce Arrow. That's a cool place. Showroom. It's a very cool place. Yeah, he's, mm. he's done it. He's done a great job. And Vic Christopher doing over mm -hmm. his corner of, <laughs> of Broadway between the alley and Second Street. That whole, literally, the whole, you know, where Pex and, and the confectionery are all done. And it's yeah, it's w you know, so you have it's these like visioning the people, bones are there, right? You know, and 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 Dean and Jeff File when they they took on what was File Hardware. Now it's the Ace Hardware. When they took that building on. Everybody kind of like, wow, I can't believe you're doing it, but they did. And now you've got these great luxury apartments upstairs, underground parking, heated sidewalks. I mean, that was a ma that was a major boost. Is that why that's always clear? Always clean. Yeah, they did the you know the the oh, right, know, the, the, the tube. Yeah, 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 the yeah. yeah. The heated. Yeah, they run like hot water or warm the water, hot water or whatever it is. Yeah, that runs underneath that to keep. Keep the sidewalks. Oh, you know clean. secrets, don't you? Yeah, I did. I didn't know that, oh, that secret. Was fun. Yeah, it's not great. I was like, I, when I walked by there yeah, yesterday, it's always clean. I was like, what? <laughs> Who the heck is out here? Who's out shuffling? <laughs> you know, literally with a blow dryer or something. Yeah, no, they heated the sidewalks. It's great, but and they that was a big gamble there, and God, it went it went out great. You know, was that fairly good. recently? Yeah, um, God, you know, it's probably uh, ten years ago. So that was a gamble in Troy. A decade ago was a really gamble. It was. It was. It was a gamble to to take that big of a project on and and do it. But it's wonderful. Where do you feel uh, the momentum of Troy is going now? We've only been here about a year and a half, oh, my girlfriend um, and I, and it feels. Like our first two weeks here, <laughs> we saw five new restaurants opening. Our yeah. first two weeks, and we're like, yeah. "Wait, where? Where are we? Right? Where's the? We never lived in a place like that." Yeah, it's um, you know, having having grown, watch the the ebbs and flows and things, I, and I get that question asked to me a lot. Um, I, back in ninety, is it ninety eight? Maybe might have been in ninety eight when um was our I think one of our low points there was a you know a city hall there was a sign for sale on city hall uh, you know things were things were not well we we're you know the it was it was just not good and then they had some really good people that came in and worked well together and uh, Mark Pattison was mayor and um, they had a great city council Beth Walsh and and uh, they they kind of said you know let's let's get this going and John and Michael Coca and all those guys and it's just very slowly, and of course you always take, you know, five steps up, three steps back. And so we've always seen this little kind of ebb and flow, but there's been, in the last 10 years, there's been more of a steady up, up, up. Um, certainly in the downtown area. Uh, and uh, and that needs, and now, we're, and now you start to see it spreading. I see, you know, going up through north of Hoosick Street now with the whole, um, where the Urban Growth Center came mm -hmm. in and um, moved to taking those factory buildings and turning them into, um, the apartments and things so that's kind of changing that neighborhood and 
and um, that's such an asset you can't that's, replicate. That's the old school one. To have those school old I buildings. School I taught in school one thousand years ago. Um, you did? Yeah, yeah. Pre uh, with the Unity Sunshine program was there, and uh, you know to see that now because it had been empty for so long, and to see that uh, as you know apartments up there, and and seeing that neighborhood now coming, which which needs it, you know, and it needs to keep going. Lansingburg needs, South Troy needs help, but it is it is. I think it's you know I think there's. It, it, it is. I think there's more of a climb up than... It's it's a little, you know, I said it's a couple, you know, you're going through three up, one back, and but it's going up. It's, it's, it's there steady, seems to be a steady it's trajectory. It's a pretty more steady traje traje trajectory. Yeah. My favorite thing about... I mean, there's, there's a dozen of them, but the first thing that was remarkable to me, I lived in Florida for about 10 years. Uh -huh. Florida, full of strip malls and food chains. Yeah. You know, just chains. Yeah. We come to Troy, I'm like... What? There, there was a subway here, which is gone now, right. which is like the only chain besides yeah. that Dunkin' Donuts that, uh, you know, on the Congress. Right. That's the only other chain I could think of in walking distance, like legit chain. Right. Like, right. you know, not counting Brugger's or something. But, yeah, but Brugger started it. Yeah, that's the very first. That's the thing. That's the very the first Brugger. The chain starts in Troy. Right? So, yeah, that's right. the very first Brugger. So, you can't even count that you as a chain. You can't count that that's, as a chain. Right. Um, but that's one of the things that I. I sold us on living here sold mm -hmm. my girlfriend and i are like there's just mom and pop shops everywhere yeah. which is totally different from the majority of the country but there, there seems to be a push to go to more mom and pop and eating local and the farmer's market here oh, is phenomenal I mean, what, is, what I is that yeah <coughs> we yeah. lost our mind first time we went there yeah. when uh the summer market we've been to farmer's markets throughout the country over right. the years and some pretty good ones then we come to this one in Troy. We're like, wait a second! Like, yeah. the, all this stuff within twenty or thirty miles, it seems. All these farms, all these right. this fresh produce, this meat, this mm -hmm. dairy. I could buy goat's milk. Right. Some guy has goats and he's selling the milk, yeah. and it's delicious. Have you ever had yeah. goat's milk? Yes, yeah, it yeah, is yeah. fantastic. fantastic. I goat can't cheese. Oh my god, the sheep, the sheep cheese. And, you yeah. know what I did learn though? I talked to the goat guy a lot, and because uh, I'm like, this milk has just changed my life. But what sucks is during the winter they don't produce milk for like three months. Right. And he's like, okay, I'll see you guys in three or four months. I'm like, yeah. ah. So the last, it's been about two months now since I've last had my yeah, goat's milk. It's like milk. you're waiting for the chickens for the light to change so they can catch Yeah, exactly. Eggs, exactly. Right? And now egg production, egg production, is, slowing production is slowing down. Slowing right, right. And well, it now, should be picking back up again now, right? right. <laughs> but, probably slower in December, yeah. But yeah, even the, the winter market now, it's like, where's all the greens? Right. And it, fe it feels in a way... Uh, it makes more sense to live that way. Is well, the way right. I feel. Like you're eating locally, eating from your eating from my as my grandmother used to eating from your own earth. You know. Yeah. What what, what will the earth give you? What, what will the animal, earth give you? Like it seems more natural. Right. Like now we're, eat, right. we're still eating a lot of uh, root vegetables. Root vegetables. And, right. And it's like it doesn't make sense. We shouldn't be having green stuff year round. Right. You should yeah. be eating strawberries in January. Yeah. 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 <laughs> like look where they came from. Right. Right. Exactly. exactly. So that's one of our favorite things about Troy. Whenever we have a, a visitor. That come like you got to come here on the weekend. We will go to the farmers, farmers market. market. And they're like, right. wait, what is this? Yeah, huh? The, you could buy what here? And there's all the different cheese, like cheese. I could eat cheese nonstop. Oh I know. But this farmers phenomenal. market. So what? What was the farmers like market? Was has that been around for 10, 20 years, something like that? Uh, gosh, the farmers market has been around for a good ten. Yeah. So as a kid coming here, there was oh, nothing. Oh no, 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 no! There was the 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 closest to a farmers market was the regional market over in Manans, but it wasn't anything like that. I mean, it was more that was the regional market. Manans is where you know the farmers would just deal with other produce buyers and things like that. And you needed you. Some people did go over there, but not as a not like that. It's not like it. It wasn't an event, you know, to go to. No, that's that's all new. On the other hand, I grew up where we had. Um, the farmer's market came to your door. <laughs> we had the vegetable man, and we had the egg woman, and we had the milk man, and um, those things were, you know, the Carey Brothers vegetables. They would come around with their trucks, and they had six or seven of them, and each brother took a different area of the city. So, you know, like, which Carey Brother did you have that came up, you know, to, to you know, Beaver Park and Sickaway and South Troy and Lansingburg and everything else. So, and the and Fryhoffers. Um, Fryhoffers, you had the bread man. So everybody came to your house. Did you have like? Are you talking no, like you had and milk jugs? Is, Did you have milk jugs that yeah, you yeah. leave on your front porch right. that yeah, milkman yeah, would come milk get? Yeah, yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, no. They delivered everything, and they they delivered the milk, the eggs, the butter, um, your cheese, 
and um, the Freighoffer's man would deliver the bread. Then later on the day, they came back with the cakes and the pies and all that stuff. The egg woman who lived in Brunswick, and she came down and bought us our eggs. Uh, the vegetable man came once or twice a week with the vegetables. You got your seasonal vegetables. You know, we, you know, the gr grocery stores were about the size of this room. I mean, you know, we didn't have. That's the only thing you ever needed to go to the grocery store for was paper towels and toilet paper and you know cleaning supplies. You didn't food buy came food. to you. Food came to food came to us. You know, for the most part, even you know, and most neighborhoods had meat markets. We had a meat market that was around the corner from us, the Arrow Cash, which is now um, Arrow Cash Market was a um, where the uh, uh, Alibaba's is. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. That was the meat. That was our meat market in my neighborhood. So you walk around the corner and you go to the meat. You go to the meat market. What's the deal with the mini <laughs> hot dogs around here? Oh, well, what's the deal? You know, oh, the deal. Well, you know, you have the running. You know, there was famous lunch and um, and then Gus or Charlie's hot dogs, which was right on the other side. There's that parking lot there now next to famous lunch. That was where Charlie's was. Charlie's and 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 famous lunch were competitors oh. for a thousand years before they you know we tore that down and of course there is still charlie's hot dogs across the river in uh, uh in uh, going up by maplewood yeah through water fleet I, okay between there and but, so you're saying that was the original charlie's yeah, was yeah, there right next a, to famous? Uh, i don't know if it was the original original but they were i don't know if that was the original original charlie's hot dogs but they were there for i mean as, as long as i was a kid yeah they were they were there so yeah, no, the hot dogs. Well, you had a big German community here, and um, Hembolts makes the hot dogs, and they were here in Troy. They came and uh, they came, you know, turn of the century, and started making the hot work, the hot dogs, and the little mini dogs, and the knockwurst and the bratwurst. But why and, mini dogs? And, yeah, I don't know. Why, why do we go? Dogs? Why? Do, and why are they so delicious? What they're are, so delicious. They're so incredible. Yeah, I know. People just like little food. I, I, it just was a thing. It beats me. I don't know. It's just weird. That's you the know, other thing. It's kind of one of those things. And it's just like, it just is. And it feels great to pay, like, what, 92 cents for a hot dog? Oh, they used to be 20, 10, 15 oh cents. Oh, my I God. Them being 15 cents. Oh I'm my dating God. myself now. Everybody's going, okay, we know how old she is. <laughs> <laughs> That's an asset, though. That's an asset. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 15 cents. Oh, my God. I mean, you know, it's funny. When you talk about food like that, I remember in high school, so when I, I graduated from Catholic High in 1973, um, and in high school, we finally got a McDonald's in Troy. And, you know, of course, you're a high school. Everyone's like, oh, my gosh, here we go. We got McDonald's. We got a shake. And, da, da, da. and it was on 2nd Avenue in Lansingburg, around 107th Street. It's right across from where Ted's Fish Fry is now. Now it's a car dealership or something. And it was, like, the most exciting thing since sliced bread. You know, we got a chain. We got a chain. And now it's funny. That you're oh, my God. Like, and then the funny thing is they pulled out. Because then they were he had one over in the part in the... Um, atrium parking garage and they left and i think everybody i think it was funny because it was this really kind of this people thought wow troy can't even sustain a mcdonald's how bad is this that we can't sustain a chain mm -hmm. but now when you the way you're looking at it, it's like wow look at all this great which is phenomenal. we don't want chains we don't want chains right it's it's a weird Thing. And yet, everybody kind of, you know, 20 years ago, everybody looked at, wow, what's going on with Troy? We can't hang on to it. <laughs> how can how can you not, not have people go to a McDonald's? What's going on? You know, and yet now we don't want, right, you said we don't want it. So it's it's, it's really just such a funny, it's a funny uh, thing about. Yeah, it's, it, I heard there was a big stink when they put up that Dunkin' Donuts on second and con or third and Third and I heard. What was that? Do you remember what that um, corner was part of that? Well, or there was an amazing Rand's Opera House was on that corner up until the you know, what sixties, and then it was then it was. Yeah, I'm not sure what was a big stink because there was a there was there was a jack in the box on that corner, taco joint, there in the late sixties and seventies and through the probably the early eighties I think before they went out of business, and then it was something else and then it was the building just kind of went you know stayed dormant for a while so I, I honestly don't remember the must not have been big enough controversy for me to really hang okay to because there had been a chain i mean like you said it was a it was a jack-in-the-box so <laughs> for a long time so troy being the size it's a small city when i describe yeah, it to people i it's think a, it's it's a neighborhood like right. living downtown yeah, you, it just feels right. like a neighborhood I mean, you can walk through you can walk from so, one end of troy to the other and you know so it feels to me the, the 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 portrait that you paint is back in the day it was everyone came to shop and then i think of we had the tr beautiful troy music hall here which i've been to a dozen times already i love right. that place yeah it's amazing and then we have proctors as well yeah 
so we had two massive theaters oh, and yeah, all the shopping. There were about ten massive theaters. Well, you just said an opera house <laughs> right. too, and this there is the first time I'm hearing Rand's this opera, opera house. house. There was the Palace that was on Fifth Avenue and Hoosick Street. There was the Lincoln Theater, which was right next to where the hardware store is. There, where there's the empty lot there before you get to Cooper. Well, what was Cooper Shoes? Um, there was the Rialto. There's the Bijou up in Lansingburg, which then became the Oxford. Um, I'm sure I'm forgetting some, and somebody will call me on it. Um, the Troy Theater on River Street, which is right about where the right about where the Vietnam Memorial is. That was where the Troy Theater was, which was an incredible building. That was one of which should never have been torn down. Um, so, and then the um, what was the American Theater, which is still there, uh, which is then became a, the Cinema Art, which was you know specializing in foreign and domestic films. Um, that was after 1970, and then that got shut down because you know was that the was smut a, place? Was the smut place? No, was okay. the porn theater, yeah. Um, and but it's still there, and so that could be such a great little. Um, that could be a great uh, like like the Spectrum is over in Albany. It could be a terrific independent um, independent theater. Um, so yeah, no. So we had more, Proctor's was one of the bigger ones, you know. So you know, when I was a kid, we went to Proctor's and the Troy Theater. All so the what time. happened with Proctor? I've had a clear. Well, Pro you know, it's just, you know a lot of the same. I mean, it's not something that you know, it's not something that Troy necessarily did. It was you know, people started going to the to the to the big the where you could go to pick out you know ten different movies and the things. So it's when Crossgates mm -hmm. and Colony Center opened, and uh, you know, so you went to those you know they went went to those theater. You can go to see two or three movies and in different theaters or sit and see the one in Proctor's and it was expensive to keep that's a big theater it is a big so you're saying that was something. just a movie theater yeah well it started out as a vaudeville <laughs> theater so they had performed you know they have performances and then they tried to make money doing things like they did the um oh, what's it called when they show the fights and it's uh, simulcast or okay. something you know they did that kind of thing and they had tried to have some live performances but I remember the last movie I saw there was 2001 A Space Odyssey so that was like what? It was like 1972 or something like that. Yeah. What a cool place to see that movie. What a cool place to see that movie. I can't. It was a great place, and it was. It, I said it was was a wonderful building. It was already handicapped accessible. It was. They didn't have stairs. It was all ramped going up to the um to all the different to the different balconies. Oh, cool! It was phenomenal. It was just it was the most beautiful theater. Really, I think prettier than. Forgive me, people in Schenectady. I, I love you, Proctor's. <laughs> but our Troy Proctor's was really, really? was not was nicer. Is it just rotting away now, or is it? I no, heard RPI been, it, it bought has it. Been, it is. I'm not sure who actually owns it right now. I, think, I don't know. I think RPI sold it. Um, the actual, the whole building of Proctor's. Part of that is all was all offices and things, and that part has all been restored. The Chamber of Commerce is there. Looks beautiful. There's businesses on the first floor to the south of where the entrance to the theater. The theater itself has been kind of mothballed. Um, they've replaced the roof, so there's no water pouring in. Um, I'm assuming they've shut shut the water off, so nothing else is springing leaks. But yeah, it needs a lot of work. It needs that's a major it's a major overhaul, and and uh, you have to be able to know that enough people are going to come in to support it. Um, you know, it took Proctors and Schenectady a long time to get to where they are now um, with with getting the, the kind of shows and, and things like well, that. Well, that's a fantastic you know, place. A fantastic but you, you're place. saying this one, right, dollar for dollar, for, dollar it was for your money. It was, it was better. <laughs> oh, man. Sorry, people in Schenectady. But that's crazy. There's so that. many theaters in this little city. It's yeah. so many department stores. Well, but think about, you know, when you, you see a Troy, but, you know, you've got to remember Troy is the county seat for Rensselaer County. So you've got, you know, Rensselaer County is about 460 square miles. There's 14 towns, um, you know, of Rensselaer County going from all the way below the city of Rensselaer all the way up through Scaticoke. <clears throat> you go into the Vermont and Massachusetts border up, by, you know, coming up over the mountain and everything. So we cover a big territory and everything came down to Troy. So... It really was, you know, it was really, was a hub, uh, you know, and even when Cohoes in Green Island, it's going to be, was coming into, coming into Contrives, a lot of and schlepping all the way down to Albany. So, you know, so a lot of everybody, you know, I said all the buses and things. So it really was this, you know, and, and that was true even in the, in the 19th century. I mean, they, and there was always this amazing competition between Albany. Of course, Albany's 100 or something plus years older than Troy. Um, they're, you know, established a lot longer, but there's always, there was always a, you know, a healthy competition uh, between Troy and Albany. So, Do you feel that now? 
Oh, sure. People still don't cross the river. I think it's a riot. You know, I mean, I, I just, it's funny because people in Detroit say, like, yeah, I'm going over to Albany on time. But then people in Albany go, oh. That's what I feel too. Oh, I can't come to Detroit. It's like, why? <laughs> What's the matter? You know, oh, yeah. It's like, are you kidding me? You know, but you know, I, you know, I've got friends. My my kids live in Niskayuna, so I'm always schlepping around the river. Mm-hmm. You know, I go all over the capital region. I'm either doing lectures and things. I just don't even think about it. But a lot of people do. It's really funny. Like, people get really oh, tribal boy, about their cities. They, people do get tribal about it. And I get that. I'm tribal about my city and county. You know, yeah, um, I love it. Um, but it's funny. I think you know, they're like, oh, the one way streets. Oh, the parking. That's like, oh my god. <laughs> It's, it's like funny you bring up the one-way streets. How how often do I see? Where, it's but easy on the one-way streets. So I you don't go down know. One more, turn around and come back. For my, for you and I, that's easy. Yeah. But I don't think a week goes by where I don't see somebody going down the wrong street, oh, I know. the wrong way. Like a, <laughs> not a week goes like, by. No, 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 go back, yeah, go back. yeah. <laughs> Stop. Yeah. <laughs> like how is this that hard? <laughs> I know. How is this? I mean, even Manhattan is all one-way streets. It's like it's not. It's just not that. It doesn't. If it, it, you know, I've driven in Manhattan. Hundreds of times, it doesn't intim- that doesn't intimidate me either. Now, I'll tell you, a city that intimidates me is Boston. Yes, Boston's, Boston's overwhelming. Boston's like overwhelming, only because there's no straight streets. <laughs> I think this is another I think fantastic this is a great grid pattern, and it's easy to drive around Troy, just like Manhattan's easy to drive around. Do you know? Do you know what the solution is? Yeah. Well, light rail, cars, oh, light rail, exactly our light rail, light Again. rail. Get our light rail in. And people will stop going down the wrong ways on the streets. Right, right. Take the rail. Take the train. You know? Um, it, there's so, it, there's so, so many things. things there's so many things. All we, we talk. need is money. <laughs> <laughs> so Which is coming back, time. hopefully. Yeah, it is. I think, yeah, yeah. You know? There's really good people and that are here in Troy that really have Troy the best... Um, you know, the, 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 you know, they really want the best for the city. We don't all agree on how to get there, but, you know, everybody wants it to be that way. And, and you know, if everybody just kind of takes a breath and calms down and, you know, work together and, and see what a great, great city it is. Because it is walkable. Um, I was fortunate about 15 years ago. God, I can't guess what's that one. Probably about at least 13, 14 years ago to walk around um, a travel writer from the New York Times, Fred Bernstein who we spent about three hours with. He goes, this is such a great city. And he wrote this amazing article for us. I still have it hanging in my office. Um, Troy, New York, where antiques can't be sold. And it was a great title. And I had people that still come up from the city holding that article going, I read this article about Troy and I can't wait to see this great architecture. And of course, we've had all these movies filmed here. And and, um, people come from literally around the world to come to Troy. They understand you know, what we have had to offer with this with architecture and they understand the history of all these amazing inventions that came out of here and these very forward thinking people. And so sometimes it's it's almost like we just have to, I, I keep telling people, I said, you know what? You need to become a tourist in your own town. Become a tourist in Troy. Become a tourist in Rensselaer County and look around and see what you have here. Spend the time, come down to the farmer's market, go out to the farms out, Go to Laughing Earth Farm out in Brunswick and go down to Skodak and um, go up to the Knickerbocker Mansion in, in Scaticoke and go there for Nick at Night, which is an incredible experience. And be a tourist within the within the 20 miles of where you live. <clears throat> and I guarantee you, you will be singing praises till the cows come home, you know? I've never felt so planted in a city as I do mm-hmm. here. So well, to speak, we are we are tourists. Yeah. We tell people that come visit friends and family, just yeah. come here, park your car, and we don't. You don't need to right. walk. You don't need to drive for three days. Right. Everywhere that you want to go, everything that you could think of doing, we could just walk there. Yeah. And I think I think you, you're you're selling it exactly the way it should be sold. Yeah. Is this is a great place to be a tourist yeah. and live. Yeah. Because like you're li- you're walking around history as a history nerd as and a history person nerd. who appreciates <laughs> other history nerds, yeah. like. Like this has been fantastic. I think that's a great place to wrap this up. All right. You just oh, sold it Troy. Was great. You just sold Troy really well. <laughs> I enjoyed it. <laughs> Catherine or Kathy? Cat. You call, I'm Catherine, but everybody calls me Kathy. All right. Unless Kathy. you're my grandkids, you call me Emma. <laughs> all right. All right. <laughs> Kathy Sheehan, Rensselaer Historical County, official Troy City historian. That's okay. Right. And this has been great. Thank you so much for doing you're this. You're very welcome. Thank all you. All right. Take care. Great. All right. Thanks. Bye, everyone. Go do something Bye. else. <laughs>